Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This is Comics Today. This is a show that I do every single Wednesday night to celebrate the best day of the week, that being New Comic Book Day. And I will tell you, uh, it was a big new comic book day for me, and I will explain in just a few moments. This show is one that we do in which we come together as a community and we have a conversation about some news and some current events, things that are top of mind for me and that may also be top of mind for you. And as part of this show, we tend to have a guest or two to help us make sense of some things that are out there in the news. And this show is going to be like every other show in that we are going to have some guests join us in this hour that we will have together. And I have to give a huge shout out to Guaranteed Comics. Guaranteed Comics is actually sponsoring tonight's show. And by sponsoring, I don't mean that there was any money exchange, but what they have done is they have put a couple of really cool books on the table and we are going to give away at least at least one of those books during this show. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. But I want to give again a huge shout out to Guarantee Comics uh, for sponsoring this show. And we will spend some time a little bit later in this show actually talking about uh, this website and why I am giving them a little bit of airtime. So again, stay tuned for that. Um, as we always do at the beginning of comics today, I take a moment to acknowledge some comic book soldiers that have joined me in the live stream. And the way that we do that is we put out a call to see what books you may have picked up today as part of new comic book day. And if you had a chance to actually read any of those books, give us a shout out. Let us know which books we should put on the top of the stack. So I'm going to be going to the comment section here in a hot second to kind of see what it is that you guys picked up. But what I'll tell you is that this was a big week for me. I went to one of my comic shops. The first comic shop that I went to, I was a little disappointed. I'm going to be honest with you. My stack was a little light. It was three books. It was a little light week for me. Uh, I did manage to pick up solid blood. And thankfully, because I do have a good relationship with uh, my comic shop, I was able to pick that up for cover price. I also was able to get X-Force and Immortal Hulk. But because it has been such a hectic day, I have not read a single book. But when I went to the, the first shop, I was I was there pretty quickly, right? I paid in advance. I walked up to the door, grabbed my books. I got back in the car. I, I felt like I didn't really have an experience, right? So I said, I'm going to hit the second comic shop. So I had not been there in quite some time, but I went to the comic shop. The second one, this is what was waiting for me. <laughs> I did not know. Um, I, I didn't realize that I had not been there this long, right? So a uh, nice stack of books that I actually picked up from Juan earlier today. And uh, we had a fantastic conversation. And then I realized that I was actually running late and had to uh, skedaddle. I hit some some very high speeds on my way home uh, to try to get there in time for for my wife to uh, to relieve her so that she could go do some other things. So I am going to go to the um, to the chat here real quick. Oh, I'm up on a big screen. Oh, let me pause. Here you go. You're it. Did you get it? Hopefully you got a good shot of that. You guys post up these photos, man, of me with just I don't know who the guy is. Uh, what is this real quick? L Smith says. Uh, oh, here, here's his list. He picked up American Ronin, Batman, Black Cat, Immortal Hulk, Once in Future. Oh, that's a dope book. Savage Avengers. Uh, he picked up Solid Blood 17. What happened to 1 through 16? I'm curious. I don't I don't know. Uh, he says, thanks for the heads up. You, you are very welcome, brother. You are very welcome for that. A lot of people I don't think really knew about, about this book. So it was cool that I was able to give people some, some a notice on that book and that folks were able to pick it up. I know there were some folks that were challenged with actually getting copies for affordable prices. But what I will tell you is way to go on not catching the brick. There were some people that reached out to me that were like, hey, the, the shop and other people are selling it for 40 bucks. Don't catch a brick. Don't catch a brick. Um, so let me go through the comments here to see what else you guys picked up. Juggernauts in the house. He said, uh, got solid blood 17 at his LCS. They found three copies there. Wait a minute. Then found three copies. 
That's what's up. There you go. Well done. They didn't even know what they had, brother. They probably just had it on the shelf, you know? So congrats on that, my friend. I have not yet read it. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I So here's the crazy thing, bro, is I went to the second comic shop. He had all those books for me, right? When I first walked in, he said, I got nothing for you. I said, you have nothing for me? He said, well, I don't have any new books. So his D, his Marvel books had not arrived. His DC books had. Um, so he didn't have a, a, the copy of uh, Solid Blood that he had set aside for me. But like I said, he had a massive stack uh, that was waiting for me that I had to pay for. So uh, scrolling through, scrolling through, uh, Kimball's in the house. He said he picked up Death Metal 6 and the David Finch variant. That's what's up. Um, who did I just see? Oh, did I just see? Okay, Rush. How you doing, brother? My Canadian brother. He said he picked up Black Cat in Spider-Man 4. Um, confirmed. What is that? ASM 194. Red Ocean, if not already. <laughs> oh, I had not seen that news. I had not seen that news. Uh, I do not know how to say your name, Jay. So I'm just going to stick with Jay. He picked up a nice uh, a nice stack of books here. Um, Flyer 5. I've heard very good things about that. American Ronin, We Live, Black Cat. Uh, Commanders in Crisis, Got the Solid Blood, and also Steelwater. I've heard very good things about that one as well. That is indeed a big haul, brother. It's a lot of books. It's a lot of books. When he pulled it out, I said, what's that? <laughs> oh, man. Let me scroll through the comments here. Uh, what is this? Almighty Liger King says, Solid Blood is going for 20 bucks on the eBay. Don't catch a brick, people. Don't catch a brick. Uh, I still don't know what's going on with Solid Blood. So, okay, so here's the thing. Matt, if you missed it, basically Solid Blood, it, it, it came out from uh, Kirkman. It came out from Kirkman. Uh, Robert, I think is his name. I sometimes get the Robert and the Tyler confused, kind of like Green Goblin and Green Lantern. It's It happens, right? Uh, one of the Kirkman brothers, uh, he, he on his YouTube channel uh, did a little bit of a, a gimmick, right? Talking about this book showed up at the distributor, uh, didn't know how or why or where it came from, et cetera, et cetera. It is basically him having a little bit of fun and Image doing what it is that Image has been doing for the last several uh, uh, weeks and months with giving away these really nice books for no reason for shops that they, they haven't paid for them. I don't think that they pay for them, but they put it on their invoice to make them aware of it. Um, and it's like firepower and some of the Negan lives variants that they put out there for people. And um, yeah, it's just a random book. Um, and, and there's probably something that he's going to do with these characters later on down the line. At least that's what he kind of alluded to. Robert Kirkman did. His name is on the book. I should have just read it. Um, but there is no issue one through 16. There is no issue. They're having some fun starting with issue 17. And what I told somebody earlier today, it's like the origin of the century where they throw it out there and you like, what is going on? Because it's so weird and unusual, you dig into the details and you become engrossed. And that's essentially what they're trying to do is to play on that. And it's really, really well done. I applaud them for that. Scrolling through, uh, Chris Bigger is talking about the news out here that Chris Claremont is coming back to CGC. He is indeed and. In I'm trying to get an invite. We'll see whether we can make that happen. But yeah, uh, Chris Claremont is actually headed back to CGC. That news came out a little bit earlier today. So that's what's up. Um, let me see. Let me see. Old school paper says Almighty Liger King. Vanessa's in the house. Tina's in here. The OG Blue Wrench. It is good to see you, my friend, as always. All right. So I want to keep this thing moving forward again because I want to get to this uh, this little giveaway that we're going to do a little bit later in the show, uh, sponsored by Guaranteed Comics, who just launched their website and also their Instagram a little bit earlier today. I definitely want you guys to be able to check out both of those things. So I want to leave some time for that a little bit later in the show. But uh, one of the things that you guys know is that over the last several months and possibly even like the last year and a half, I've been talking a lot about goal setting and the importance of setting goals as well as removing barriers and obstacles that might be preventing you from achieving the goals that you actually set for your collection. And that's part of the reason why I released a video earlier this week with five tips on how to avoid FOMO. And I did this because FOMO, the fear of missing out, is one of those things that can get in the way of us achieving the goals that we set for ourselves. If there's a big book that we want, 
if we are nickel and diming our money away with some of these other distractions, then it makes it really hard for us to save up the money for the book that we really want. But it, it's hard. It's hard because we, we like instant gratification. We like the hunt. We like the chase. We like the spec. We like having fun because this is a hobby that should be fun. But at the end of the day, if the FOMO is getting in the way of your happiness in terms of you being able to achieve your goals, then that's when it becomes a little bit of a problem. And so what I wanted to do is, is I wanted to kind of continue this discussion about FOMO, about goal setting, the importance of goal setting, why I believe in it, all of that good stuff. And you're going to see over you know the next few weeks content that is going to be coming out that's going to address this. But to acknowledge that, I actually wanted to take a moment to have a guest actually come on the show and chat with me just a little bit about some of the goals that he has set for himself and to get a feel for how goal setting works from his perspective, what successes and maybe even failures he've had, he's had. I really don't know where the conversation is going to go. So I'm kind of setting it up kind of big and, and we'll meander through this thing. Uh, but I wanted to invite a, um, a, another comic book soldier from the community on to the channel to chat with me. And to that point, my man, Master Blaster is here. What's up, Reggie? Master Blaster, I'm going to be honest with you, brother. Uh, that is a that is a very nice shirt you have on. I love it. Now, is this <laughs> one of our private streams? No, 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 no. You are literally on prime time here, my friend. There, there are right now 70 people right now and, and more to come. Uh, but this is not one of our private chats. This is this is real time right here. Say hello to the people. What's up, people? <laughs> well done. Blue trenches. <laughs> so, so you guys may not know th this dude early on. He sent me a really nice comic book and it was a comic book that he, I don't know how long it took him. He basically took the entire front of the comic and replaced the black on the cover with blue painter's tape because I, I like painter's tape and, and he sent it to me in the mail. I opened it up and it was, I thought it was fantastic. I still think it's fantastic, uh, but I'm, I'll be honest with you. I did, I am surprised that you still have blue painter's tape left after you did that cover. And my wife thought that you were going to call the police and say, I have a stalker on my hand, right? <laughs> no, She's no. like, what are you doing? What's crazy is I, I doubled down and let you come to Garage Con and hang out with me at my actual house. So that's how much I like you. Yeah. And when I left, you gave me the international symbol with your hand that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. I still feel like I got scammed. I, I feel like I, the guy came to my house and scammed me. He walked away with a bunch of stuff. I walked away with a little sketch that was like literally this big. It gets smaller every time I tell the story, it gets smaller. Uh, but, but Master Blaster, welcome to the show, brother. I want to thank you for taking a couple of minutes out to actually join me here on Comics Today to talk about the importance of goal setting. And I think that you have established for yourself a BHAG goal, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Can you please tell the people what goal you've set for yourself? I want to collect ASM 1 through 100, yellow label, all signed by Stan Lee. Mm. You, you have to give that some room to breathe. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your statement. I think I'm crazy. I, I love it, though. It's amazing. <laughs> like, it's a big goal. It's fantastic. That's I mean, just just one through 100 is a big goal in and of itself. But to say that you're going to do Stan Lee signature series one through 100, that is like multitudes of of complexity. Why? Why did you set this goal for yourself? To challenge myself. Fun is a key. It's fun. And um, why not? I don't know. I get these books. I hunt them. I buy them. And they come in. And I'm blown away, away by each and every one of them. It's bigger than me. That's why I set the goal, right? Like, how can you get this done? It's like, how do you eat the elephant one bite at a time? Mm. Like, yeah. mm. I mean, to me... This hobby, and we've we've spoken about this a lot, should be fun. 
right? Yeah. And and sometimes giving yourself a big goal is fun because it's a challenge and it's like, can I really do this? You know? And, and I think if you're, in my opinion, if you're not having fun, when you're talking about funny pages, you might be doing it a little wrong. Right. And so people could look at your goal and they could say, well, that is crazy. Right. But your goal is not someone else's goal, right? Your goal is specific to you. And, and it's meaningful to you. It keeps you engaged. It keeps you excited about the hobby. It makes the hunt fun. Would you agree with that? Would you tweak anything in that, in that couple of sentences that I just uttered? I agree with it, but I would say this. I would say when you talk about setting a goal, at first it seems like it's going to limit you somehow. Like, this is the goal. I'm not going to do anything else. And I only want to accomplish that. And that is not fun. Mm, mm. Okay. So the goal is uh, a guideline. It's the North Star. Right? So I am I set like little milestones. Like I'm trying to buy one book a month towards the goal. Yep. But the opportunity needs to be there. I'm not just like within this month. I have to buy a book if there's not, if it's, if they're all overpriced, then I can wait. And that's just like, I'm weaving through it and I have to check myself monthly or I did a year in review, right? I laid out the books that were Mm -hmm. the goal books and the not goal books. And I looked, I took a hard look and I got scared. I got scared because I had met my goal but I had more non-goal books mm-hmm. than goal books. And I'm like, is, does, is that, defi- is that not good? It might, mm. but when I looked at the non-goal books, they were all opportunities that I should not have passed up. So let, let's break that down because there was a lot there, right? What, what I'm hearing you say is that you have a goal to get one through 100 yellow label, Stan Lee signed books. And you've broken that big goal down into smaller chunks where you want to buy at least one book per month that meets that goal. But while you're doing that, that does not mean that you're not picking up other books that you really enjoy along the way. Is that true? 100%. Okay. And then, so how do those other non-goal books, I think you called it, how do those books play into what you're doing overall, right? And are you, are you buying those because you also have an interest in them? Are you buying them because you're, they're, they're great buying opportunities and you're going to use them to fund the main goal? Talk with us about, about that. Both. Okay. So this is the goal right now is to get those books. I will get there. And if I go with my gut, you know, I collect original art and I went into the original art, liking art, being fascinated in it, but I did not have a goal. Mm -hmm. And then I just, one day I was like, what am I doing? I can't buy all these pages forever. It's expensive. I didn't have a goal and it just ended because I didn't have a goal, right? I was just consuming it. I loved it. I love buying it. I love getting it, but there was not a rhyme or reason exactly to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So when I have this goal and the off goal books that interest me could be a future goal after this one's accomplished. Mm. And if they aren't, it could be because it was an opportunity in the future to take those books and speculate a little bit and a little bit of FOMO and turn it back over into the goal, like get back on the goal, right? Yep. Yep. Flip them if I need to, yep. or I might keep them. And I'll give you a perfect example. It is a book that I got recently, uh, Flash 123, which is a big Flash book. And my daughter, you know I have four kids, hmm. and all this stuff I'm doing is for fun because I grew up with the comic books and I'm trying to do fun things with my kids with what i am interested in you know and she loves the cw flash Mm -hmm. and i'm like this is a key this is an opportunity it's way off goal but i can make this thing happen right Mm -hmm. so i made it happen and i look at that book all the time and i love it 
and she, I tell her, this is your book. I got it for you. You like the flash, you know, D daddy's just going to hold it for a couple of years. I'm going to enjoy it and <laughs> throw it on Instagram and all this stuff. Um, but let me tell you about the goal. I, I want to mention that it is critical to, for me to verbalize the goal. Mm -hmm. That's to my wife and share it on Instagram. And the reason I'm doing that is every time it comes out of my mouth and I talk to my wife about it, I'm excited about it and she sees that and there's buy-in. And I'm checking myself. If it's work or I'm not excited about it, mm -hmm. I'll stop the goal, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not, it's a goal. I need to be excited about it the whole time. It's not, it's supposed to be fun. Yep. And uh, that's just what I'm doing. I think what I want to say about goal setting is I don't see it as a regimental. I have markers, but I allow myself to have freedom. Does there that make go. sense? It does. does. It does. Because, because to your point, if you're, if the hobby should be fun and you have to have goals, but you shouldn't also put the blinders on and only focus on that narrow goal to the point where you're not even having any fun at all. You know what I'm saying? And you, you have to, in my opinion, and I talked about this, have to, you have to have a cheat meal. If you're doing really good, you have to have a cheat meal. You have to like, relax a little bit so that you can um so that you can still be engaged and you can still be fluid and you don't feel constrained by the goal that you're having to the point of you verbalizing the goal to your wife to yourself sharing it on Instagram is there also an element of accountability there where where you're looking for people to maybe keep you honest on the goal is is that part of it and it's okay to say no i just i'm asking the question though uh, yeah, because boxes are showing up, money's going out the door. I'm on Craigslist for a hunt, yeah. and I've got to keep my wife happy, right? Yeah. So yeah. we talk about it all the time, and she tests me and she prods. Mm. A box showed up. Is that a goal book? Mm. And I have a little explaining to do. Yeah, right. Yeah, but she met me. And I was in the comic book. So she knew what she was in for. And it's, it's, we're a team. Yep. Right. And um, that's what keeps it going. If she didn't support me, it'd be game over. There'd be none of this. You wouldn't have that back there. Cause that's a nice setup. That right. would not be happening if it, if she weren't bought into this. So it's good that she's on board. You know what I'm saying? I think I saw a question up in there. And one of the questions that I heard from people was, how are you tracking on your goal of one to 100 signature series from Stan Lee? How, how much have you been able to progress on that goal? Okay. It will shock probably most people that right now I can't, I, I have 30 of them. Okay. Ish. I know which ones I have in my brain. Mm -hmm. Like I know, like, I don't have that one. It's a good price. I'm looking at it. I'm deciding if I'm going to buy it. I'm looking at the clarity of the signature, the placement, the pages, the value. If it's a filler book, I have to make moves like on a chessboard because I'm not rich. Yeah. All right. I make jokes about the sugar mama, but I mean, there's, I've got the four kids. I got things to do, other things to do. So I have to be rational about it. Money is in play, right? Yep. So I do it loose and that probably sounds bad, but that's the, it, that's how it has to be for me for it to be fun. Yep. If it's analytical, it's not going to be fun for me. So I'm very loose with it. That's how it has to be for me. And that's what works for you. For somebody else, the analytical aspect may work better. They may literally have a checklist uh, in a in a an Excel spreadsheet of like every book and be tracking it because that's how they have their fun. And I think what I'm hearing you say is, have your goal, 
but have the goal set up in such a way that it works for you and for your personality and for your family situation. If you have a family, right? That's what I'm hearing is, is there isn't one way or one right way to do it. It is figure it out. That's what I'm hearing you say. Is that fair? It's definitely fair. You have to be flexible. It's like, it contradicts itself. It's like, I'm going to set this goal and I'm going to make it happen. Like I could just drop everything I'm doing and put my head down and make it happen. That's yeah. not, I want to set the goal so that it setting the goal actually evolved my collection. I had to sell books. I had to sell original mm -hmm. art. Yeah. And that was a good thing because then I looked in those areas and I said, I've accumulated 150 original art pages. That mm. was not a goal. Mm. I love my pages, but I could probably survive and would love 30 pages, let's say. Yeah. So now I look at them and my gut served me well. And I can turn some pages and get some books that I never could have gotten. There we and go. then I look at the raw books and then the same thing. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's oh, nothing wrong with yeah. having stuff and deciding that it doesn't matter that much to you now and letting it go and giving it up and turn it into cash for you to go and invest it in something that makes you happy. And I mean, let's fast forward, maybe 10 years from now, you're like, oh, I'm ready to let go of some of these Stan Lee books because they don't matter as much as they do. That's actually okay too, you know? 100%. I'm going to get to this goal because... I'm getting these books and it's fantastic and I'm having so much fun, but I believe what you just said, just because I set that goal doesn't mean they're, I'm going to hold them forever. Yep. It's this not a forever goal. goal. Knows what the future holds Yep. and yep. I'm you, staying loose and having fun. You may have another kid. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number times two. Say that one more time. I, I missed it. We're outnumbered times two. Mm. Me and my wife. We have mm. four children. Yeah. We're, we we're play man to man defense in this house, brother. Get some grandkids one day, right? <laughs> we we play man to man over here. So, but but I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, you said and and I, maybe I heard you wrong, but I think you said like you only have thirty of the one hundred. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's a lot. Right. No, I mean, you, you shouldn't say only you have set a fantastic goal for your collection that makes you happy, that gives you focus, that keeps you honest. And you are taking that goal down. You are eating that elephant one bite at a time. And, and before you know it in your own time, you're going to be like, that was a great meal, right? Never like, I don't, I don't take the only out, right? Like Yoda says, there is no try. There's only do or something like that. Brother, 30 books out of 100 signature series, un, you know, one to 100 of Amazing Spider-Man, that's an accomplishment. And I, I think that's a huge success. So thanks, brother. I appreciate it. All right. So, so I, what, can I say I put my I put my uniform on, I put my boots on, and I do it right in front of the case. And it blows my mind. You know, I'm just like, I have these books. It's yes. So. It, it's a fantastic accomplishment, my friend. So again, I want to I want to thank you for uh, giving me a little bit of time to to join me to chat a little bit about your goal. Uh, I'm sorry that I actually did not throw up on screen like I do for most guests the ticker, which gives all of your contact information. That is absolutely my bad. So, um, do you want to give people a quick rundown of like your Instagram page so that they can come by and and like all of your wonderful yellow label books that you tease me with on a on a regular basis. Do you want to give a shout out to that? Yeah, that's cool. Thanks. Uh, Master Blaster 129 for Amazing Spider-Man 129. Um, come check me out. Uh, the yellow ocean is warm, if you know what I'm saying, brother. <laughs> come check I'm, I'm not messing with your yellow ocean. I'm going to be honest. With you. <laughs> Blaster, I, I appreciate you, brother. Tell the family I said hello. And with that, I'm going to let you go and we're going to get back to this chat. Awesome. Thanks. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with Master Blaster. I absolutely love that guy. I talked to him 
probably every day. I mean, there, there's a couple of people out there that I literally talk to like every day and, and I enjoy him. He is, he is a good, a good comic book soldier and also a solid family man. So I definitely dig that. We are getting geared up for our next guest. And before we get to the next guest, I want to uh, drop this commercial, which features some comic book soldiers giving you a very important message. Hey, my name's Doug. My name is Wesley Campbell. My name is Jeff Provini. Matt Woods here. Hey, and I subscribe to Reggie Collects on YouTube. And I subscribe to Reggie Collects. And I want to encourage you to do so also. And if you want to see the best creator content on all of YouTube. And if you want some robust comic book conversations. You should subscribe to Reggie Collects too. I encourage you to subscribe as well. Constantly, constantly putting out material almost daily. You will not be disappointed. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I definitely want to encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. Turn on notifications so that you can stay abreast of all the content that gets released from the channel on a weekly basis. With that said, we are going to get ready to welcome our next guest. And our next guest is actually going to come on here to give me a little assistance. But I want to, I want to give you guys a little bit of a background on why we are doing this. And I teed it up at the beginning of the show. We are doing it because... Back, I want to say like September, October, uh, the owner of this website right here actually reached out to me, Guarantee Comics, reached out to me and started a dialogue just about comics in general. And then over time, it kind of became a discussion around if I might be able to provide a little bit of, of support via the channel by giving them a shout out on the channel. And I will tell you, a lot of people actually come to me asking for help. I don't help everybody. I'm going to be honest with you. And, and I don't because if I ask you a couple of questions and your idea kind of falls apart a little bit or you can't answer the questions, I start to struggle with, can I, you know, can I help you? If you can't help yourself, can I help you? Right. Um, I asked some really hard questions of guaranteed comics. They were able to answer the questions we, we had the exchange. They were like, we're going to get back to you. They went away for a while. They came back. They checked in. We had another conversation. It went away. They came back. We had another conversation. Like this thing went on for several months. And finally, they were in a position to be able to launch their website, Guaranteed Comics. And this thing is really cool. And what's cool about it is that a lot of times people are buying books on, on eBay. They're buying raw books from, from people and they don't really know the overall condition of those books. And a lot of times people that are selling books will say it is a near mint book, near mint book. I mean, we, we all see that on the eBay machine and you get the book and it's not anywhere near that. And this is a service that has been set up that basically helps guarantee and some of that and take some of the risk out of actually buying comic books online. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but essentially the way that this thing works is that you go to their site, you find a book that you want, you buy the book. The book will come with like, here's the grade, here's the description, here's the photos. That book once bought is then sent to guarantee comics. They hold it, they receive it. They will then send that book to CGC on your behalf, get the book graded, and when the book comes back at the grade that the seller said that it was going to be at, you then get the book and the seller gets the proceeds from the sale. So it is basically a middleman that tries to offer a little bit of protection to ensure that the books that are being sold are not restored books, that they are at the grade that they're expected to be, that they're shipped properly, and that they actually come back you know, cause they're raw as they actually come back at that grade. And again, I'm not going to get into all the details of how the service works, but I will invite you guys to head over to their website, which, which is going to be linked in the description of this video. And is also up on screen. I encourage you guys to go check them out on the website and then to also check them out on the Instagram machine. They launched their Instagram page earlier today. It is guaranteed underscore comics on Instagram. Please, 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 please go show another member of the comic book community a little bit of love. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, they are sponsoring some giveaways here on the channel. They're sponsoring this show right now, but they're not giving me money. What they're doing is 
giving you guys some books. And so I want to show you uh, some of the books that are going to be given away. And hopefully I can tee this up the right way. Um, the first book is this book right here. It is amazing. Let me blow. Let me blow this up. This is Amazing Spider-Man issue number twenty, CGC, a three point oh. This is one of the books that they have put on the table for me to give back to you guys. That is not the book we're giving away today. We're actually going to give this book away next week. <laughs> but you guys definitely want to stay tuned uh, because we will be giving that book away. I, I promise you that book will be given away next week. But for this one, what we are going to do is to give away this book right here, The Last Ronin. And this was a book that was really hard for some people to actually find out there. These guys have put it on the table and are allowing me to actually give it away to one lucky subscriber in the U.S. or a subscriber that has as a mailing address in the United States. So that is, that's what we're basically going to do. And what I've done is I've actually invited another member of the comic book community to come on to actually help me do a little bit of trivia to give away this book. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking a risk here. I'm going to be honest with you. I am taking a risk by having uh, this guy come on the channel. And, and I say that because People say that I have a nice voice. This guy has a really, really nice voice. My man, Donald Sully Two Kings, welcome to Comics Today. Greetings, Reggie. How are you all doing? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? He hits me, he hits <laughs> me with the greeting, the greetings and the salutations in his, in his uh, gravelly voice, man. Welcome, brother. It is good to see you. It is good to see you too. Greetings, good people. It's fine to see everyone in person. <laughs> I love this guy. Brother, again, I want to thank you for taking time out to actually join me on here. Um, we we have had a, some discussions in the past about you actually coming onto the show in the future. I'm looking forward to having you come back in a couple of months. You're, you're working on a couple of things, and, and I want to have you come back to talk about those things when you are ready. But today, you graciously volunteered your time to come on and to do one trivia question so that we can give away that last Ronin comic book to one lucky comic book soldier. With that, I'm going to get you, I'm going to ask you to get ready to read that question to us. And what we're going to do is if you are in the chat, you have to be present to win. Donald Sully Two Kings is going to read the question. The first person to respond with the correct answer will be the winner. Lag is real, so bear with us when we do that. And don't, don't be mad, but lag is a real thing, all right? Um, spelling will not count because I cannot spell to save my life, all right? So with that, I'm going to stop uh, commenting, and I'm going to ask Sully Two Kings to ask his question and then the first correct answer is the winner. There we go. Excellent. All right. So we're looking. Okay. Here's the question. Who was the first known major black super villain in comic book history? Mm. You hit a pregnant pauses on that. Mm. <laughs> Repeat it one more time for me. Who was the first known major black super villain in comic book history. So we are looking in the comment section right now for the answer to that question. And we will see, uh, I get to see uh, master blast and now Sully two Kings. What a treat tonight. Great people all around. Yes, indeed. Oh, the chat just exploded. The chat just exploded. So let me scroll down. See, I see Lobo right here. I see an answer right there from Chuck. Is that the correct answer? Sully two Kings. The correct answer. Black mm. men. I'm going to be honest with you. I am not surprised that Chuck got that. <laughs> <laughs> if if you know Chuck, you would not be surprised by that one. Go In ahead. Fact, let me just put that up right there. Now you're just showing off right there. <laughs> let, 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 us see, let us see that book up close. Tell us what that book is. It's Aquaman number 35, September 1969. Wow. So, so Chuck, you right, start... 67. 67. I'm, I cut you off there. Uh, my man Chuck, he got it. 
Chuck, you know, you know the routine, brother. Send me an email to Reggie at Reggie Collects with your uh your full name, which I already know, your mail-in address. And uh, I'm going to pass that information on to Guarantee Comics, who is going to bundle up that last Ronin for you and send it out to you. Because I don't actually have it in my possession. These guys have it, and they will send it out to you. Uh, I got. I see a couple of other answers here. Uh, Jag says, uh, Juggernaut says, good. Oh, let me scroll up. That chat exploded, man. He says, <laughs> good question right there. My man Jerry was like, Lobo. That's what I would have guessed. Joe said Killmonger. Doc said Killmonger. Almighty Liar King was just like, I don't know. That hmm, that's just I don't know. Let me put it. Let me put in. Let me let me just 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 see if anybody else knows who was the first major black supervillain in Marvel. Mm. And so it was pause. not Killmonger. Let's let's pause on that one. Repeat it one more time, just just in case. Who was the first black major supervillain in Marvel? And it was not Killmonger. There we go. So let, let's see if somebody knows that. Maybe here's the thing. Maybe I'll put something on it. If somebody actually knows this. Is Sequential that it? Geek got it. Mbaku. Mbaku, man ape. Sequential Geek. There we go. Sequential Geek. There we go. Sequential Geek. If you are in the US, I, I don't know what Sully Two Kings is doing. He's just giving away prizes. Uh, <laughs> if you are in the US, you send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. I'm going to bundle something up, full name, mail in address. I'm going to bundle something up and I'm going to send it out to you. All right. So let's do this. Let's do one more. And I told you, I told you, we, when we talked about this earlier, I was like, I might just get frisky. I might get frisky. All right. So two years ago, uh, Sully Two Kings reached out to me and he asked me a question uh, about trivia and I didn't know the answer. And it bothered me so much that I spent a considerable amount of time tracking down <laughs> the answer to this question. And, and he reminded me of that just earlier today. What I'm going to do is this. Later tonight, when this this live stream concludes and goes live. I'm going to do a, a check of the comment section and I'm going to do a random. Um, I'm going to do, uh, can I do that? I think I'm going to do a random thing of the correct answers and I'm going to give away something to the person that gets this next trivia question correct. <laughs> and I don't know if somebody's going to get it. I don't know if somebody's going to get it, but, but, but go ahead and pose the question to them that you pose to me, and then we will see if anybody gets the right answer. So go ahead. All right. Good luck, everyone, because this stumped me and Reggie for a minute. So here's the question. The question is, in which issue was it revealed how Misty Knight lost her arm? One more time for them. Mm. In which issue was it revealed how Misty Knight lost her arm to later on be replaced by the cybernetic prosthetic? So again, don't shout your answer out here unless you want to have a lot of competition. But if you know that answer, post it up on the comment section. When this thing gets posted and goes, goes up, post it up. Later tonight, I'm going to do a quick search and I'm going to give away a prize. And uh, I will indicate in the comment section who the winner is. And then you'll have to just send me that email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. And I will send out a nice prize pack for you. All right. So Sully to Kings, brother, I want to thank you for jumping on here for a couple of minutes and chatting with me and, and uh, forcing me to give away some prizes and stuff like that. You know, I, this was not fully planned, uh, but, but it was a lot of fun. And we may have to have you come back, like I said, to, to spend some more time with me. I certainly shall be glad to do it. And it was great to see Master Blaster. And listen, let me say, in seeing Master Blaster, this was a ball night. Hey, brother. This was a ball night. You, yes. you beat me to the punch. You beat that's me to right. the punch. <laughs> Ball brothers got it going on tonight. That's all I'm that's saying. Right. Nothing but cue balls up in here. Uh, <laughs> before I let you go, brother, um, do you want to give a shout out to your Instagram page so people know where to find you so that they can see your collection, part of which is displayed behind you over there? Give us a shout out of your uh, of your Instagram page. Sure. It's very easy. Solly Two Kings on IG. S-O-L-L-Y, the number two, Kings with an S, yes? Correct. Excellent. My, my man. Brother, thank you very much. I will talk to you soon. I appreciate you. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Reggie. Take care. Good people.
that guy's voice, my goodness, he puts me to shame. I will tell you, I, I got hooked on him a couple of years ago. He was doing these video clips on Instagram in which he actually um, was given like this great history on characters, on black characters in history that I was not aware of. And every time he released a video, I was there watching and commenting on these, these clips and they, I enjoyed them. I really did. And I was like, this dude has such a great voice. And uh, he did not disappoint. He showed up and he he crushed it here. So I want to thank uh, Solly Two Kings and also want to thank Master Blaster uh, for spending just a little bit of time with me. Uh, we are going to get ready to wrap this thing up. But again, I want to encourage you guys one more time. If you have some time to please visit uh, this website right here, Guarantee Comics. The link to the website is in the description of the video. They are also on Instagram at guaranteed underscore comics. They are actually sponsoring tonight's giveaway of that copy of The Last Ronin, which was just won by Chuck. And then I think next week, I'm actually going to have these folks on the channel to maybe answer some of your questions as to how the service works. So as you hit their site up, if you're checking out, you know, how it works and, and you're checking out about them, because there's a lot of really great detail here. If you have questions, I would encourage you to send them an email. Their email is info at guaranteecomics.com. Send them an email ask them some questions. The site literally launched today. This is a new service that is out there. I think that they're doing some really cool stuff and I want to try to support another member of the comic book community. So again, if you guys can visit the site and also check out their Instagram page, uh, it goes a long way, especially when people are giving out copies of The Last Ronin and also giving away a uh, 3.0 copy of Amazing Spider-Man issue number 20, uh, one of my favorite covers. And I'm going to show this book one more time for you guys so you can check it out. Um, I definitely want to encourage you guys to tune in next week because they're going to be on the show. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the questions that people have. And then we're also going to find a way to give away a copy of this book right here, which they have graciously put on the table for me to be able to to give away. All right. So with that, I'm going to get ready to talk about the very last topic that is on the agenda. So give me a hot second as I um, throw up this commercial one more time and get myself situated for the last segment. In hey, the my name's Doug. My name is Wesley Campbell. My name is Jeff Provini. Matt Woods here. Hey, and I subscribe to Reggie Collects on YouTube. And I subscribe to Reggie Collects. And I want to encourage you to do so also. And if you want to see the best creator content on all of YouTube, and if you want some robust comic book conversations, you should subscribe to Reggie Collects too. I encourage you to subscribe as well. Constantly, constantly putting out material almost daily. You will not be disappointed. So yesterday, Urban Legend, a uh, subscriber, actually sent me a message. He sent me an email notifying me of something, and I honestly was not aware of it. And again, huge shout out to all of the comic book soldier reporters that provide me with information about what is actually happening in our industry, because there's so much stuff that is out there. Uh, one person cannot keep track of it all. And what I want to talk about is uh, the King in Black. If you guys have not read The King in Black, I definitely want to encourage you guys to check it out. It is really well done. Ryan Stegman and Donnie Cates are doing a fantastic job with this series. I absolutely enjoyed my read of it. Uh, and if you haven't read it, treat yourself. That is what I'm saying to you. But there was some news that actually came out uh, yesterday that um, Urban Legend actually hipped me to. And the news is this, that Ryan's work, his work on King and Black is going to be pulled into a museum. And this news came out yesterday. Uh, along with some other news, right? And, and so uh, some of the big news, and, and this is actually really cool that Master Blaster was on here. I probably should have kept him around. Basically, what we are, are learning is that Ryan Stegman's King in Black original art issue has sold completely. 
And, and basically what they are saying here on this site, FelixComicArt.com, is that the entire series, the entire series is set to sell nearly 150 pages of original art to King and Black is being sold. So no one is really surprised by that part of it because King and Black is a really dope read. It's Venom, it's Noel, it's Ryan Stegman. People are excited. But here's the thing. It's actually being sold to a single person. A single collector is actually buying this, which makes it a little unusual because this, this uh, service, Felix Comic Art, tries to spread the love. They try to spread the wealth so as to not let an entire collection of, of pages land in one collector's um, inventory. And so what they point out here is that the collector that they have sold this to isn't just any collector. He is actually is a curator and um, they are going to allow the organization to make their announcement when, when they choose to. But what is going to happen is these 150 pages from King and Black are actually going to be put into a museum. And I think that they have picked out the land for where this museum is going to be located. It has not yet been built. We don't know what kind of museum it's going to be, whether it's going to be a museum to comic book art or whether it's going to be to modern art or whether it's going to be to something. But Ryan Stegman's work is going to appear at some point in a museum. And I think that that is really cool. And so uh, there weren't a whole lot of details in this thing, but they kind of walk through the fact that um, they say, you know, while I fully understand that it can be disappointing for all art from this series is going to be locked up into an institution, he basically says, look, we should be happy for Ryan. We should be happy for him because somebody wants his artwork for a museum. And, and that's, that's pretty darn cool, to be honest with you. And so I wanted to kind of share that news with you guys, because I thought it was cool. I thought, again, King in Black was a dope series. I think people are really excited about Noel. And uh, it is really cool that someone is trying to pull together this great artwork to be able to put it on display for the public and possibly even for us to enjoy. Because here's the thing, there is art out there that has been produced that never really gets seen publicly because it goes in someone's art portfolio and, and gets locked away. And we don't see it at all until it comes up for sale whenever, whenever that may happen, you know, and, and it does not happen all that often. So this is, this is both a good thing and a bad thing. Um, I actually am looking at it more of a good thing, to be honest with you. So again, I wanted to kind of share that that news with you guys just so that you guys had some awareness of that. One of the other things that I wanted to make mention of is that if you commented on the video that was released on Monday, I am actually going to be doing a giveaway. Um, what I've been doing is trying to do random giveaways because I have a lot of books that people have given me and just in my collection in general. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing is sometimes giving away uh, books to people that comment on videos when videos get posted up. So I'm talking about substantive comments. And so if indeed you commented on the video on Monday, I'm probably going to randomize the list and do a giveaway tonight of um, Crisis on Infinite Earths, issue number seven, The Death of Supergirl, and then also this book right here, Batman 497. These are two books from the 100K collection that I'm going to be giving away to one lucky subscriber that is located in the US. So stay tuned because you might be the person that gets picked. All right. With that said, I'm going to wrap this up. I want to give again a huge shout out to both of my guests for giving up their time and, and coming on to help us to make sense of some things that are happening out there and also to facilitate me giving away some books to you guys. And uh, stay tuned to the channel because there is still more content that is going to be coming out over the course of this week, blog posts in addition to videos as well. And if you haven't watched all the videos this week, you definitely want to stay tuned because this is this week's Go Collect giveaway book, Batman 357, a 9.2 with white pages. As always, if you guys need me, don't hesitate to reach out to me on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care.